11 AV blocks. These are the different degrees of AV blocks that we will be discussing today. First, we have first degree AV block, second degree AV block type 1, also known as Morbid's 1 or Winky Bob. Then we have second degree type 2, also known as Morbid's, Mobit's 2. Then we have a 2 to 1 AV block and a third degree AV block, also known as a complete heart block. The normal criteria for any AV block is, in an AV block, they may have an underlining sinus rhythm. They have a PR interval that is prolonged, which means it's greater than or equal to 0 0.20 seconds. And sometimes they'll have some P's that will not always follow a QRS, but their P to P interval will always stay regular, no matter if a QRS follows. First AV block we will talk about is called the first degree AV block. First degree AV blocks have a prolonged PR interval. The criteria for a first degree AV block are this. They can occur at any rate. Regularity can on, depend on the underlying rhythm. P waves are upright matching, meaning one P for each QRS. Your PR intervals are prolonged but consistent, meaning they're greater than or equal to 0 0.20 seconds, and your QRS are less than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds. Here's an example of a first degree AV block. As you can see, our PR interval for this rhythm is 11 little blocks wide which makes it 0 0.44 seconds. As, and you can see that this makes it greater than 0 0.20. Our R to R intervals are consistent, and for every Q there is a P wave. So the underlying rhythm for this particular AV, first degree AV block is a normal sinus rhythm. So this example would be written as an interpretation as normal sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block. Causes of a first degree AV block are AV node ischemia, digitalis toxicity, side effect of another medication such as beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, this is a benign type of rhythm, but can't be alert for worsening AV blocks. First degree AV block is seen only within rhythms originating in sinus node. Treatments of a first degree AV block. Usually there are no symptoms. We simply just remove you off the medication that is causing the problem of you having a first degree block. Next AV block we'll talk about is the second degree AV block type 1, otherwise known as a Winky Bach or Mobitz 1. Mobitz 1 is usually the name this AV block is usually called. Criteria for a second degree AV block type 1 are atrial rate is usually 60 to 100 beats per minute. Ventricular rate is less than the atrial rate due to non-conducted beats. Regularity is usually irregular, which is a hallmark, hallmark for a Winky Bach, is groups of beat, then a pause. All peaks except where the block occurs are followed by a QRS. Gradually prolonged PR intervals until the QRS is dropped. So let's So as you can see on this example, as the P's are generated out, they get further and further apart until they drop their QRS and then it goes back to where it started from again. Hint, if your PR intervals gradually prolong, 9 out of 10, you have 
a second degree type one or winky buck or mobits one, whichever name you want to name it. So always follow this paraphrase longer, longer drop. Causes of a second degree AV block type one is a myocardial infarction, of course, digitalis toxicity or medication side effects. Adverse effects in treatments. Usually no ill effects occur during a second degree type one, but be mindful of worsening blocks. It can get worse. Usually if a person is diagnosed with a second degree AV block, AV block type one, they'll be prepared for a transcontaneous pacing if signs of decreased cardiac output exist, or either they'll administer apropine only if a pacemaker is not immediately available and only if the patient is becomes systematic symptomatic second degree av block type 2 or as his other known name is mobits 2 criteria for a second degree av block type 2 are Atrial rate usually anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Ventricular rate less than atrial rate due to drop beats. Regularity may be regular, irregular, or regular but interrupted depending on where the drop beat happens and for how long. All P's except the blocked P's have a QRS behind them. Some P waves may be hidden inside the QRS complex or the T wave. PR intervals stay consistent throughout the entire rhythm. Now let's take a look at an example of a second degree AV block type 2 is this. As you can see, your PR intervals stay consistent, five blocks apiece from your QRS all throughout the rhythm. The regularity of this rhythm is regular but interrupted by a pause due to how it dropped its QRS. So we would simply interpret this rhythm as a sinus arrest with a morbid 2. Because remember, all AV blocks have an underlying rhythm of a sinus because they all come from the sinus node. Causes of a second degree type 2. Myocardial infarction, conjunction system lesions, medication side effects, or hypoxia. Adverse effects in treatment. Due to heart rate being very slow, the patient may have signs of decreased cardiac output. Morbid 2 can persists into a third degree AV block if left untreated. Immediate transcontaneous pacing is done on a patient if immediate if a pacemaker can is not available at that point, they'll do either do a dopamine infusion, epinephrine, or atropine. Atropine, sorry. Next block we'll talk about is a two to one. A two to one is a type of second degree block as well. The only difference is where the QRS drops, there's two P waves. Criteria for a two to one AV block are atrial rates, of course, stay anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Ventricular rate is half of that of the atrial rate. So if your atrial rate is 60 beats per minute, it, your ventricular rate will be 30 beats per minute due to dropped QRSs. Regularity is regular. There are two P waves to each QRS, but your P to P interval is regular. Your PR interval is consistent. There are just two P waves followed by a QRS. 
Let's take a look at an example of a two. So as you can see from this example, there are two P ways for each QRS. And I have them circled here. Look also, one of the P's is this within the T wave, which is this one here, very first one. It's within and here and here. Causes of a two to one AV block are the same as a Morbid's 2 being to the fact that they're one and the same. The only difference is it has two, two, two P waves for every QRS that is followed. Adverse effects and treatments of a 2 to 1, you can show signs of decreased cardiac output if the heart rate is too slow. Therefore, a transcontaneous pacing is the only thing with patients who are showing signs of decreased cardiac output. If a pacemaker is not readily available, they'll put the patient, they'll start them on oxygen or a dopamine infusion. Our next AV block is our third degree AV block. In a third degree AV block, the sinus node sends out its impulse as usual, but none of them even get to the ventricles. It's like a faulty starter on a car. It starts but don't connect. Criteria for a third degree AV block are, you have atrial rates usually 60 to 100 beats per minute, ventricular rates usually 20 to 60 beats per minute, your regularity stays regular, your P to P interval is also regular, P waves may be hidden within your QRS complex or the T wave, or you may have P waves that are not followed by a QRS complex. This is what we call AV disassociation. PR intervals are varied, being that you may, your P's are kind of everywhere. Um, your QRS's are narrow or wide, depending on the location of where the block occurs. Example of a third degree AV block rhythm, as you can see, we have more P's than QRS's. There's a lot of those P's. Causes of a third degree AV block are myocardial infarction, conjunction system lesions, medication side effects, or hypoxia. Some adverse effects and treatments. Your adverse effects of a third degree AV block are you will have low cardiac output. It may occur if the heart rate is slow enough. Trans continuous pacing is used for patients who are symptomatic. And for whatever reason, if a pacemaker is not available, they'll start the patient on oxygen or a dopamine infusion until a more permanent pacemaker can be put in, such as a transvenous pacemaker. A tool that can help you tell the difference between a first degree and a third degree AV block, if you use this algorithm that I've set up right here, and if you go through this algorithm and you go through every rhythm to see if you have a second degree or a third degree, you simply follow this rhythm. And we're gonna work this example using the algorithm. First one set, the first question asks, are any P's not followed by a QRS on the strip? So do we have any P's follow, not followed by a QRS? And is the PP interval regular? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And here's a P. And here's a P. And here's a P. And here's a P. 
and here's a peat, and here's a peat, and another peat, and another one. So yes, yes to both. There is a second or third degree AV block. Does the PR interval vary or change? Well, let's see. Let's erase this one. Not very handy with this pen, so be patient while I work this out. And this is a tiny rhythm strip. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four here. And let's erase this one. Ooh, I said erase. And erase this one, this one, this one, and this one. Let's see. Are they consistent? That looks like it's five. This might be five. I can't tell. It's tiny and I'm blind. And I can't draw with this pen too good. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, it looks like it is consistent. So Yes, it is consistent. Phew. Is the RR interval regular? Well, let's find out. We go from this R to this R. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. This is 37. You know what? I can write that a little better. little better this R to this R that's 5 10 15 16 18 this R to this R 5 10 15 16 17 about 18 again and then this R to that R, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37. And this R to that R is 18. So is the RR interval regular? Mm, no. So no, we have a Winkybuck. So that's how this algorithm works. It just tells you. So what is say for instance, since it's, it doesn't fit any of this on this side, then we know it's not this and not this. So that makes it what? A first degree AV block. So if it doesn't fall into none of these criteria that are on the left and it falls onto the right, then we know it's automatically a first degree AV block. Another helpful tool that I like to use, it's called the heart block poem. So if the R is far from P, then you have a first degree, meaning your R, your P and your QRS are prolonged and it's consistent all the way across. You don't have a drop, just your P is far away. If you have a longer, longer, longer drop, then you have a winky buck. If some P's don't get through, then you have a Mobitz too. 
If P's and Q's don't agree, meaning you have more P's than you have Q's, then you have a third degree. Poem. I'd like to thank you, and this is the end of Chapter 1, AV Block Lecture. Happy interpreting!